the new power both now and the next one. Please thank the Gonzalez family for a special item. him and release him, for of the necessity 
he must release one unto them at the least. And they cried out at once, saying, Away with this man, and release him as Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into, into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them, but they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil had he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it would be as they required. And he released unto them him that was for sedition and murder, was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. Verse 26, And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, in the, in the which they say, it shall say, Blessed are the, blessed are the barren, and the wounds that never bear, and the puffs that never gave suck. For they shall begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto, unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over the earth, all over the earth, until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, in, the hand, in thy hands I command my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. In verse 48, and we'll stop here. And all the people that came together to that side, beholding the things which were done, he smote the breast and returned. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, thank you, Lord, for these words that was spoken, Lord, and was read from your Bible, O oh dear Father. Help us, O oh Lord, to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and help us, O oh Lord, that we can come to you knowing that we are all 
condemn and sinners before you. Lord, allow us, O Lord, to know thy salvation. Allow us, O Lord, to know thy Savior, O Lord, thy Son, to save our soul from this condemnation in hell. We thank you, we praise you. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As I mentioned, allow me to speak about the person that was crucified on that cross on the day that was this story happens. This man was crucified by man. But who is Jesus? We may be asking ourselves, who is he? And to you personally, who is Jesus to you? Oh, I know, Pastor, I know he's a, he's a righteous man. He is a prophet. He is a holy man. He is the Son of God. And he is divine. He is one of the Trinity. Other, other answers would come in. But the real question is, who is Jesus to you, personally? Now we've heard Sister Malin gave her testimony. And she said, I, I, I remember her word when I received Jesus in my heart. Now that's personal. She said she received Jesus in her heart. Now, receiving Jesus in the heart becomes a personal relationship with God. Jesus now becomes a savior to her. Saving because he doesn't want to go to hell, as according to her words. And by receiving Jesus, it becomes a personal savior to her. Now, that is the point that we're making. As a Christian, you must have a personal relationship with God so that you can become a Christian. Now, you can always claim to be a Christian. We can always, oh, I'm a Christian because I am not other uh, religion, and I have no other choice because this is the more convenient religion and close that I could uh, associate it with. But what is a Christian? What is the value of that word Christian? The value of that word is that there is a relationship between Christ and you. Let me define the word Christ. I, the, Jesus is his name. Christ is a positional title. Because all the Jews believe in Christ, but they don't believe Jesus was the Christ or is the Christ. Up to now, if you will be asking a Jew, they believe in Christ, but they don't believe that Jesus was Christ. Okay? So there's a big difference between those things. But for us who believe in the Lord Jesus, that He is the Christ, He is our Jesus Christ. So what is the point that I'm making here? Let's define the word Christ. We know His name is Jesus. But what is Christ? Christ means in the Hebrew word is Mishiach, or the Savior, or the Messiah, the one who would come to save us or to redeem his people. If you believe that Jesus is the one who could save you, he is Jesus Christ to you. Now that is the point that we need to understand that there is a relationship involved. But before it even comes to that one, he was crucified. He died on the cross and on the third day resurrected and come to the glory with God. For the promise that all that belongs to him and those who will receive him to be with him in the end. Well, that's a good promise, and that we all want that. We want all to go to heaven. We desire to go to heaven. But we don't want the relationship with God. There we start. What happened in the story that I just read? I just want to present Jesus to you. Here, we see that the Lord died on the cross as I mentioned and there is no doubt that he came to the world to save sinners just like you and me but why 
There's a lot of whys there that you need to ask yourself. Why does God have to send his son, come down here on earth, be born in the manger, and then die on the cross? Just like any murderers, together with those murderers and male factors, just like what we did. Why? The answer is very clear. To, to solve the puzzle that we puzzling men about these questions, there is the word here in the word of God in the book of Luke as well. Just one chapter before this chapter we read. It is in Luke chapter 22, verse 19 and 20. And I will be reading that to you. And this way clean up the puzzle. Why Christ has to die? I will be reading that to you. Verse 22, 19 and 20. The Bible says, this is during the time that they were having the Lord's Supper, where the Lord explains everything. But if you are not listening well to the word of the Lord, it will just pass you by without noticing anything. So just listen to this. The word of the Lord came here, and during that time, he said in 19 to 20, He took bread and gave thanks and break it, and gave it to, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In verse 20, likewise do uh, also in the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Now I just read it. What's the key word there? He mentioned about his body. The bread is the symbolism of his body. And the wine symbolism of his blood that was shed on that cross. But why? What is the word that was mentioned by the Lord? Listen again. The word is for you. And I would be reading that this is the word that we miss. This is the word that we miss. He said here, This is my body, which is given for you. And then the other part in verse 20, he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So what is the message of the Lord here? That he needs to die for us. His body needs to be sacrificed for us. His blood needs to be shed for us. That is the key word that we need to understand about his death. And that will clear up everything why God has to send his son to die here in this world. To die for us. But that's so complex. And it will always perplex any mind. It will blow us. Because we can never understand. Lord, you died for me. Why? Because we are separated by, uh, from God because of our sins. Man has no hope because of sin. Why did I say there is no hope for man? If you will be examining who God is, and you would be examining ourselves in the presence of God, we will know that we can never be able to stand before God. For God is holy, righteous, and just. And men are wicked and sinful. It will never be reconciled. If a sinner will stand before God, you know what will happen. A holy God and a sinner before him, you know what will happen. The anger of the Lord will be kindled because sin can never be in the presence of God. That is so natural. Being the creator, a holy God. But God loves us. If that will be the way, then no one can stand before God, right? No one can come to God, for we are all sinners and fail to be righteous in the eyes of God. So God had been the way, made the action, and had said his son, there is no one 
that can redeem man, but he himself, God himself. So he lowered himself here to become man. Leave his throne and come here to be born in the manger. So that he would walk like men, talk like men, dwell like men, live like men, die like men. And he was crucified. What is the essence of all these things? Because so that you can be able to stand before God, you need to be holy. But what can make man holy? Has anyone has an answer to that? What can wash away the blood that was in our hands? The sin that was in our life. What can make man holy? Who could be who has the answer to that? Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission. Remission means cleansing. So without the shedding of the blood, there will be no cleansing of sin. And that is why the Hebrew are sacrificing the animals and shedding the blood and offering at the altar. But it is a continual thing until the Messiah will come. But there is no temple to sacrifice. Even the Jews cannot sacrifice. There is no temple. There is no altar. The Lord had fulfilled everything. He was the Lamb of God, and He is the Lamb of God. And He shed His blood so that those who believe in Him can be cleansed of their sins and will be forgiven of their sins. And when they face God, God the Father will see the blood of His Son in that person. And God will declare Him holy because of Christ. That is the gospel of Christ. So that we can be reconciled with him. But we need him. His blood was shed. Already done. He said it is finished. What's stopping you from coming to Christ? What's stopping you from believing in him? The Bible says we confess our sins. He is faithful in just to forgive us. Of our sins and cleanse us. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ in making him our Savior. I will go back to this question earlier and I heard Mr. Malin again the word she said I received Jesus and that's so personal. When you receive Jesus he becomes your savior, personal savior. Whatever, whatever happens in the world, you have your savior. You are never lost because you received him to be your savior. Now the question I would like to ask, and I don't need your answer right now, and this will be a rhetorical question. Have you received Jesus in your life to be your personal savior? So that his blood will be your covering. And then when you face, come to face to face with the father. And the father can see his, the blood of his son in you. Because you received him as your Lord and Savior. Because you have a personal relationship with Jesus. The father will see the blood of his son. And his wrath will be pacified. And he will declare us holy and righteous and be with him reconciled. That is the salvation of man. What's stopping us from receiving Jesus? It's not convenient time. I'm busy. I have so many things to take care of. Being a Christian is an inconvenience for me. I don't want the label. The thing is, before it's too late, what would you do with Jesus? He died on the cross 2,000 years ago. He said it is finished. What will you do to that finished work of the Calvary? Will you receive him as your personal savior? Or you leave it? Uh, I, I, I know God is the God of love. 
I hope that I could come to heaven. Today is the day that you shall know your salvation. You must know if you're saved or not. How shall I know, Pastor? If you have Christ, if you have a personal relationship with Him, then you know that you're saved. Without a shadow of a doubt. I've heard many testimonies, and I've heard this earlier. Sister Malin gave her testimony. She is convinced, she is adamant that she is saved. I am saved. How could you, my brothers and sisters, will you accept Jesus as your personal Savior as well? What will you do with Christ? Heavenly Father, Almighty God, thank you, dear Lord, for these words. And I pray and ask, Lord, that it will be, be well in our hearts, that it will be con continuing fire in our heart to know and to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts and receive him as our personal Savior. Indeed, Lord, allow your people, O oh Lord, here this uh, evening to be able to say that indeed, Jesus is my Christ. He is my Messiah. He is my Savior. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. We praise you, we honor you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>